Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Lily from lilyarder.com and this is where I like to share all of my DIYs and home decor. Today, we're gonna dive into paint stripping. So, I will be sharing how I completely stripped the paint off my desk, which had about five layers of paint. Um, I purchased this desk at a local thrift store about five years ago and I gave it multiple coats of paint myself on top of whatever it already had. And then a couple of weeks ago, I finally decided to just strip all the paint away and start from scratch. I was hoping to get a weathered um, like wood look, that's what I was going for. Um, so I will be sharing that with you. Uh, I will share the good and the ugly in this video. So this is gonna be very in depth and I will be sharing all of the mistakes and all of the little hiccups I came across. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, okay, let's get started. Before I jump into this makeover, I do want to mention for those of you that are new, I post all of my DIYs on the blog. Um, so if you're looking for the supply list or links to all the products I used, feel free to check that out. I'll go ahead and add a link in the description. Okay, when I first got this desk five years ago, this is what it looked like. Someone had already painted it a brown color and I decided since it was already painted, I would just paint over it with my own color. And because I was into shabby chic back then, I painted it a mint green color. Not sure what I was thinking, but I got sick of that green color real fast. <laughs> I never really had time to do anything with the desk, so I left it like that for about five years. I had considered getting a new desk recently to give my office a refresh, but realized solid wood desks are actually really expensive. So about a month ago, I pulled the desk outside and decided to give it yet another coat of paint. I was hoping to get a nice deep gray color. This was actually my inspo photo I found on Pinterest. It almost looked like a gray with a greenish hue and I really loved it. My desk ended up being nothing like it. It was so hard to get the perfect color when you're not actually painting the desk in the area that you plan to display it. I would bring in like a shelf inside and it just looked too dark so I kept lightening the paint and eventually when I put the desk all together and it was done and dry, it looked way lighter than what I wanted. We also cut off the rounded edges on the legs to try and match my inspiration photo more. It wasn't hard at all to do and definitely gave the desk a more modern look. We did actually something similar with our dresser makeover last year and I love this hack. It makes such a huge difference in furniture. Okay, let's jump into the paint stripping. The reason I had actually decided to strip the paint wasn't because the color on the desk was too light. It was actually because the paint, the gray paint, started peeling. I could literally rub the paint off with my finger. I'm assuming this happened because I added um, bonding primer to lighten the paint instead of actual white paint. So I'm assuming there was some sort of chemical reaction and after about three days, the paint just started rubbing off in areas. It was stretchy and sticky so I figured the only way to fix this problem was to remove all the paint and start from scratch. I had originally thought that the desk had about three layers of paint until I started stripping the paint and realized with the primer, there was about five to six layers of paint. So this required some super strong paint stripper. I started off with this airplane paint stripper and the reason I started with this was because Tony had previously tried it and said it worked great to remove paint off an old Chevy he was restoring. I figured, Airplane paint is strong and they'd have to make a super strong paint stripper So I thought for sure it would work My plan for this was to get all five layers of paint with one scrape I so badly didn't want to sit there and pick at it and have to keep reapplying the stripper Sadly this paint stripper was a complete fail I just think it didn't stay wet long enough to penetrate through the layers in fact It literally just turned the surface rusty and was impossible to re remove I think the reason this didn't work is because latex paint is completely different from airplane paint so there was probably not the correct chemical reaction. Okay, next I tried this citrus strip and smart strip. Um, I applied a small test area using both products. Um, the consistency of citrus strip was thick but still runny and the smart strip was thick but chunky. They both applied easily. Um, I made sure to apply a nice thick layer and I let the test areas for both products sit for about 30 minutes and then I used my scraper to remove it. So here's how the citrus strip removed the paint and here's how the smart strip removed the paint. It's probably not too noticeable on camera but the citrus strip removed the paint with much more ease versus the 
smart strip. This is when I realized, yay, there's hope. <laughs> I went ahead and applied the citrus strip all over the whole desk and covered it with some plastic. I made sure to apply a thick, even coat. I let it set outside for 24 hours like this, letting the citrus strip soak in. Keep in mind, it was like 100 degrees outside all week long, so I'm sure the heat helped a bit. The cool thing about citrus strip is even though it looks like it dried up, it still stayed soft and worked on softening the paint as long as it was on the desk. I feel like the Smart Strip brand didn't do this as much even though it was a thicker consistency. Once it dried, it seemed like it was done working. The next day, I removed the plastic and used a metal scraper to remove all the paint. It cut through all five layers of paint like a hot knife through butter. This was actually somewhat therapeutic. And this citrus strip um, actually doesn't stink as bad as the airplane stripper. Um, so it wasn't bad at all. After the first coat of citrus strip was removed, I ended up reapplying another thin coat and letting it sit for another hour before scraping it off as well. I do think this helped get the leftover sticky paint off pretty well. Okay, cleaning the stripper. If you're thinking scraping the paint off was hard, this step had me in for a spin. I first tried lacquer thinner I had at home to remove the sticky mess left over from the stripper and it worked. I poured the lacquer thinner onto the desk and used a scoring pad to lift up all the stickiness. Then I used a paper towel to wipe it clean. This method ended up taking up way too much paper towels. I feel like because the paper towel didn't have enough texture, um, it just kept sliding around um, rather than wiping the area clean. I ended up having to use damp microfi microfiber cloths to wipe it clean. And in the end, I went through three microfiber cloths. I couldn't wash the residue off of them, so I ended up having to toss them out. Okay, next was sanding. Um, I'm gonna be honest, this took way longer than I had expected. I'm not sure if it was because it was so hot outside and I had to keep taking breaks, but um, I used my dual sander and 220 grit sandpaper to sand it down. Um, the worst part was getting all the edges and the corners, but um, here's how it looked after it was done being sanded. So next, I decided to bleach my wood. Um, yeah, I found an article online and I was like, oh my gosh, the results are amazing. It completely strips the stain. You don't, you can't even sand it to that point. Like the bleach just completely takes the color out. So I thought, cool, I'll just bleach my wood. I found an article online. I followed all the instructions and the instructions indicated to use household bleach. Um, little did I know I needed to neutralize the bleach, which I didn't. Uh, Wiki, when you Google it, WikiHow says just to wash it off with soap and water. And I just assumed the bleach evaporated, so it should be good. Um, bleach does not evaporate. It actually stays active even after it dries, unless you neutralize it. So I did not know that. Um, also, I found out that they actually make um, products specifically to bleach your wood. There's, I guess, different types of bleach. So um, I probably should have looked into that. I just didn't know. If I was to do this again, I would definitely use something that's specifically made for wood and do my research even about that product just to make sure it's not toxic. Because <laughs> believe me when I tell you, I think I ruined the desk. It stinks so bad I can't work with it. Um, I had to take it outside and I'm gonna do some research and see if there's any way I can neutralize it Okay, real quick you guys. I just wanted to do a quick update I was able to leave the desk for about five days outside while editing this video and I applied a few coats of hydrogen peroxide to neutralize the bleach and It's actually not smelling like bleach at all. So I am really excited to get it back inside the house Okay, please do not use household bleach like I did. I wish I could have shared the correct way to do this. Let's just pretend I used the right bleach that's actually made for bleaching wood. I took the bleach and applied it with a brush. I let it dry and because I didn't know bleach stays active and keeps working even while it's dry, I did multiple coats after it dried. One coat probably would have worked just fine. Okay, so I didn't do this, but after the bleach dried, I was supposed to neutralize it by washing it with water thoroughly. The bleach definitely did its job. Here's how the desk looked once it was done and I loved it at this point. Like I said, if you plan on doing this, please be cautious and do a ton of research before doing something like this, even if you plan on doing it with the correct product because inhaling too much bleach can be deadly. Okay, now that the desk was ready for staining, I made sure to use all Minwax brand um, stain and the same base. I ended up mixing a few colors um, of stain together to get the color I wanted, 
Most of the stain color I used was the fruit wood stain and then I added a little bit of golden oak and a few drops of gunstock to the mix. This gave me the perfect color of stain. This is actually the first time I make stains and I was really happy that I tried this because I love that you could customize it. I applied the stain with a brush and wiped off any excess stain. After letting the stain cure, I was ready to wax the desk. If you're not familiar with wax, you pretty much just rub it onto a surface and it is somewhat waterproof depending on how many coats of wax you apply. This wax was super soft and so easy to apply. I simply used a paper towel and rubbed it onto the surface and wiped it off right away. If it's a thin coat, it takes about 30 minutes to dry in heat and then you can reapply another coat. I ended up just doing one coat of white wax all around. I seriously feel like this white wax saved the look of this desk. The desk seemed all over the place before the wax and I feel like it just the wax just kind of pulled it all together. I'm also feeling pottery barn vibes. This must be how they get their weathered look. Next, I installed my hardware. I got my hardware on Amazon. It was actually really affordable compared to local hardware stores. I think for all 10 handles, I paid around $27, which is a steal. I also love how they made the desk look. I feel like without the handles, the desk looked so sad. Um, I'll go ahead and add a link in the description if you wanna get the same ones. Okay, for some weird reason, some of the hardware that was on this desk previously was smaller than the rest, so the holes didn't match up. I decided to just widen those holes to get all the same size hardware to fit. Um, I used this little tool to sand the hole wider. Not sure what it actually is. I just found it in Tony's shop. This worked perfect. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Last but not least, I decided to seal the top of the desk more. Um, the white wax is somewhat waterproof and becomes more waterproof if you apply multiple coats. I didn't want to apply multiple coats of the white wax so I don't build more color with the white wax so I decided to apply a clear wax I had. I did two coats of this wax over the white wax. Um, yep, that's it. I'm not usually a fan of super rustic things but this desk looks so elegant and totally looks expensive Pottery Barn style. I definitely learned a lot from this project and I probably won't be doing a big project like this anytime soon. If I would do it again, I would probably use the right products now that I know they exist. Um, I can't tell you guys how many times I wanted to give up on this project and just call it a fail, um, but I'm happy I kept going because it turned out way cuter than I expected. I even purchased a cute rug to go with it, so I can't wait to set it up. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my in-depth video and found it helpful. I know this was a little bit more in-depth than I usually do, but I had a lot of you guys request to do more in-depth videos, so um, I tried. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe for more videos I try and post weekly, unless my project has a lot of hiccups. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.